This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to talk about using Megalog Viewer HD to tune the fueling on almost any motor from basic engine log data. This data can be from a MoTeC, HalTech, Han data, Harley data, Power Commander data, almost anything you can get to a CSV or a text file. At first, we open up the data, and in this log, we're we show RPM in red, MAP in white, manifold air pressure, AFR in green, and duty cycle one or duty cycle in gold at the bottom. As you notice, it's pretty difficult to make any sense of this data other than the AFR is active. And at the top, you can see that we're running the car fairly hard from about 1,000 RPM up to around 9,000 RPM. If we zoom in a little bit and add at the bottom pulse width, which can be calculated from duty cycle, or we can get duty cycle from pulse width, no matter what data you have coming at you, you can see that we're idling at about 2400 RPM at the blue vertical line. We're pulling about 70 kPa in white at the white line. In green, the AFR is idling around 14, 14 and a half AFR. Our pulse width is at the bottom is 1.6 milliseconds, which is getting on the realm of almost too short to get a good solid idle. And that's probably why our AFR is jumping around a little bit. And our max duty cycle is running well under our 80% where I start getting concerned. If we zoom in a little bit more, you can see on the same basic trace that he's pulling up through the RPM. In the middle where you see the map jumping up and down, that's where he's throttle steering the car. And then pulling again uh, two more gears. You can even see right here where he's missed a shift. You can see where he backed out of the throttle to get it in gear and bring it on down. So now we've chosen scatter plots. What this is, is pulling in all that data that happened to be about 35 minutes worth of data that you were looking at and pulls it into one screen where along the horizontal axis is RPM from about 1,000 in the lower left to about 9,000 in the right. On the left is MAP or manifold air pressure running from about 25 on a big downshift all the way up to 105 kPa. We never really get to 105 because this is a normally aspirated motor. If you notice along the top, right through here, the motor is fairly consistently pulling green or about 13 AFR, as, as you can see on the right, where the color code is defined as red is 15 AFR and blue is 11 AFR, about the operating range of a race motor. This motor happens to be aiming for 13 AFR across the board in this log, but you notice there's a lot of red in this area. That is where the dyno operators cannot get, but in a road race motor, it happens all the time. In the center is where you're throttle steering the car, getting in and out of the throttle. If you notice everything to the left of the arrow is somewhat random, that's because this motor is so cammy, you almost cannot use anything but feel of the motor looking for a smooth idle. Also in the top right, you'll see this little filter box, and there is no red ring around that circle box. What that means is we have no filters applied. So now, let's create a calculated field. Going to, at the top, calculated fields, custom fields, add a custom field. We're going to add a field called AFR Malt or Multiplier, which is 13.0 AFR based. And the way this formula works is if the AFR divided by 13 is greater than 1.1, I want to return, after the question mark, 1.1. If the AFR divided by 13 is less than 0 0.9, I want to return a value of 0 0.9. And if neither of those situations happen, then what I'll use is AFR divided by 13. So if you think about it, if the AFR is, say, 13.5 divided by 13, your answer is about 
We also can do calculated fields and data filter editor. What this is, is it gives us the ability to throw out data on a scatter plot. So let's, for example, look at the AFR out of range. It's one I use all the time. Anytime that the AFR is greater than 17.7, I will throw out data. Or if the AFR is less than 10.3, I will throw out the data. The reason I do this is my AFR gauge is only valid from about, claimed to be valid, from 18 all the way down to a 10 AFR. But I don't really trust it out of the range of about 17.7 to 10.3. I can also do several nested things to throw out all simultaneously. If you look down at the bottom, I've got one called Startup and Warmup. And what that does is throws out if the AFR is less than 10.3, if the AFR is greater than 17.7, 155 Fahrenheit, or time is less than 20. This is a counter in seconds from the time I started the motor. So now, we're back to our basic scatter plot view. But in the top right corner, I see the filter button, which has no filter applied because there is no box around it. So what I do is go ahead and tag that filter. And up comes all my available data filters. I've got quite a few, but in this particular case, we'll probably apply AFR out of range, start up and warm up, and right below that, just off the screen, is transients. I'll be turning those three on. Also, in the very bottom right corner, you'll see four boxes down by the time on a Windows box. And what that is, is I can say I want to see one, two, three, four plots simultaneously. I'm going to choose two side by side. So here they are. On the left is my RPM and map, just like I was showing before. But it's on the left screen now with AFR in the field. And I've got my filters applied meaning that all data that falls within those filters is filtered out. On the right is this field we created, AFR multiplier, and it now runs for an absolute max of 1.1 in bright red, or 0.9, meaning you want 90% of the fuel in the areas that are blue. This is still a little messy to tune with, but you can certainly see that there are areas that are clearly red and clearly blue where we need to do some adjustment. So the easiest thing to do with Mega Log Viewer HD, we have this thing called Histogram Table Generator at the top up by the pointer. What you get is a new screen that everything is in buckets. Along the bottom, I have RPM at 500 RPM increments. That might be what I'm using in the tuning software. Yours will definitely be different, but it could be running from 500 RPM up to 6,000 RPM, for example. On the left side, I've got MAP, or Manifold Air Pressure, and these are the buckets that we're using in our tuning software. Also notice on the left, you can show the number of digits you want to see out in the field and on the axes. You can choose for rows and columns, the number of rows and columns, from say in our case 16 by 16 tables or yours may be 20 by 20 in your tuning software you can pick anything you want notice that i've got color based on value what this is is the larger numbers will show up in red the smaller values meaning pull we need to pull fuel will show up in blue and we can also do not generate xy axis what we can do is automatically generate these axes or I like to freeze them down by going do not generate. And with this left arrow button and arrow up button in the bottom left corner, I can then make any axis I want with any value I want. I'm showing the color as uh, based on hit weight. And you can see that we hit all over this map. Another way to see that is right mouse click anywhere out in the field and pick history trace length. I've picked 50,000 in this case. And what that'll do is show me the last 50,000 places I hit connected together as a line or a trace. So here's what the car looks like 
as the driver is pulling into course, driving around the pits, yes, it really does turn 6,000 RPM in the pits. Uh, it is a very cami motor. You can also see that for the most part in the pits, he's running from about 2,000 RPM to around 45, 5,000 RPM. This is the very same data, but we're showing it just where he's on track. And you'll notice about as far down as he spins the motors, around 4,000 RPM, and he gets up to around 8,500 RPM. Across the top, you'll see where his manifold air pressure slowly drops as he gets to higher and higher RPM. That's generally uh, an air filter or an intake track that's not quite big enough. As he shifts, he will transition down to the downshift area. This is where he's pulling the highest vacuums. And then as he finishes his downshift and goes back on the throttle, he'll come back vertically again. This area is where he's throttle steering the car. The way I did that was in the bottom left corner of your screen, you'll see these little bars that you can drag. What I can do is left mouse click and drag them, and you'll see this area gray out. That's data thrown out. I can also bring one in from the right. And what that will do is throw out the data beyond my vertical line. This is the area that he spends all of his time while on track. That's the area that I'm most concerned with the tuning. And here's the trace run up to like 150,000 points. And what it is, is I've tagged right here the vertical line. So it's the 150,000 dots before the line. You can tell he spends a lot of time throttle steering right in this area. This is the transitions, and this is transition. We can also look at the very same data and use those same lines pulled in from the, from the left and the right and see where he actually spent time in scatter plot mode. You'll also see the same lean spots and rich spots. If you notice right here is a little bitty rich spot, that would be a place that I would pull a little fuel. The other thing I'd like to point out is these numbers are the multipliers that you would multiply the VE table by. Since this software works on with lots of different software, in this case, we would probably use an Excel spreadsheet to match the data up so that I could apply approximately 1.6 multiplier to the VE table, adding about 6% fuel in this area. Right here, I would be adding about 4%. Other areas, I might be pulling fuel, like for example, right here. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, the developers of the software we've been using today. Uh, this is Megalog Viewer HD. They also write Tuner Studio, the software we use to tune these motors. DIY Auto-Tune, that makes and sells all these great parts and pieces we use to tune these motors and sells the AMP EFI series of ECUs. And MSExtra.com, 